Welcome to my channel, my name is Olive and today's video is a yoga and mobility flow for tattoo artists and people who work at their desk. In terms of equipment, all you're going to need is some space, a yoga mat, a carpet and some comfy clothing and we'll get started. We're going to start the session with some simple joint work just to bring kind of like a general sense of lubrication to everything. So find yourself in a comfortable seated position and we're going to start from head down to toes. So let's work into the neck to start with. You're just going to start by bringing the chin down to your chest. And then I want you to circle ear to shoulder, back through center, ear to shoulder. So just starting with these super simple crescent shapes, just gently stretching down the sides and the back of your neck. And then you can start to take it into full circular movements kind of alternating the direction you go in. Just take your time here, there's no need to rush. The idea is that we notice sensations and work in line with the feedback that our body is giving us. So if you're really enjoying kind of constantly moving, go for it. Or if you're enjoying going slow and maybe holding the position, you can roll with that. Okay, bring it all the way back to the middle. Let's have a look at our shoulders. You're going to extend your arms out to either side. And then from here, you're going to scoop and flip the palms up to the ceiling. As you do, the shoulders start to rotate up into some external rotation and then palms down, internal rotation for the shoulders. So scooping up and scooping down. Now what you might realize is that you find some extra movement in the top portion of your spine here. That's absolutely fine. You can, again, maneuver through the top portion. But if you really wanted to isolate it into your shoulders, think about keeping the spine, keeping the torso as still as possible as you go throughout the movement. So again, just kind of seeing what works best for you, perhaps exploring both as well. Nice. So we're gonna add a little bit of a variant to this. So come back to the middle, palms down. Now flip your right palm up to the ceiling and the left palm down. So now we're working opposites. One shoulder's into internal rotation, the other's into external, and then we're gonna switch. So you can kind of pay attention and see what each side feels like. But what's really lovely about this is that you can get some lateral movement into your spine, so side to side movement. So maybe as my left palm flips up, right one down, I slide towards the left and then I switch, slide to the right. Sometimes it's quite nice to do this in a tall kneeling stance so you can get extra movement and extra bit of gliding into your spinal column, left to right. Okay, and bring it back to the middle and shake it off and relax. Staying in this tall kneeling stance, we're gonna take it into some T-spine rotations T-spine is your thoracic spine, so this kind of area here. Let's cross our arms across our chest, and then I want you to think about just creating these circular movements, kind of having the central portion of the spine as like your pivot point, and you're rotating, you're bending, extending. This is perhaps one of my favorite movements to do. I do this like daily, no matter if I'm working, on my laptop or I'm teaching loads. It's just a real nice way to bring movement into this area. Change direction as well. Because what you'll find particularly if you are sat down all day, if you're drawing, if you're tattooing all day, if you're on your laptop, this part of the body easily begins to slump. So we just want to bring in some space and room for everything to move again. Okay. And then let's release, shake it off. Meet me into your tabletop position. And from this tabletop position, just kind of really making a point of spreading the fingers nice and wide, tucking the toes, stack the shoulders over the wrists, the hips over the knees. And we're gonna come into sort of those T-spine rotations, but now for the entire spine. So what I want you to think about doing is drop the belly to the ground, push the hips to the left, then arch the back, push the hips to the right, belly to the ground. So we're coming into these four circular movements, sometimes known as barrel rolls. 
and notice how I'm being fairly fluid with my arms. I'm not locking them out straight, I'm allowing them to bend and you can change direction with it. Beautiful. You could even start to circle backwards and circle forwards just to load into your toes and your wrists a little bit more. Nice. Okay. So remember, this is still just the warm up working into the wrists, just getting everything moving again. Okay. From here, we're going to have a look at a movement for the ankles, the knees, and the hips. I call this one stir the pot. <laughs> so if you come back to sitting on your knees, and then step that right foot out towards the side. So with this, I like to have my left hand down to the floor. It's a point of contact, it's a point of support. My right hand goes on top of my knee. And I'm just going to stir that leg around as if I'm stirring a big pot of soup, <laughs> hence the name. But what you notice with this is that you don't have to be flat with the foot on the floor. You can allow it to lift up on the inside, the outside rock to the heel, rock to the toes, whatever it may be. So it's just a really lovely kind of movement to bring into the entire lower body. Beautiful. Again, pause at any points, explore what feels good. All right, switch legs. Again, rocking, stirring that pot. Where does it feel good? Where do you want to move? Lovely stuff. Okay, and then let's bring it back to a kneeling position, seated position, whatever you want to work with. So to kind of finish off our joint work, I want to look at the wrists in particular and the fingers. So this one's called Paint the Fence. You're going to start with your fingertips pointing down and then you're going to glide them up as if you're painting up the fence. Then when they get to the top, flick them down all the way back to the floor. So again, gliding up and gliding down. So we're just looking at some wrist flexion and extension. Beautiful. Now you can stick to this or if you want to get a little bit of forearm engagement, what you do is close down the hands into real tight fists and you do the exact same thing. But by closing the hands into these little fists and squeezing, we get a little bit more activation into our forearm muscles, but it also feels a bit more restricted in terms of how easy the movement is to do. Beautiful. And then release, shake them out. Interlace the fingers and just come into some big kind of circular movements. Again, changing direction, being pretty sort of loose with this, pretty lax. You can take it into some waves. The other way. Lovely. And then just shake it out. Okay, from here, we're going to start to look at some tendon health for the hands. And I want to have a little look, see at some nerve flossing for the neck and the nerves that travel down from the back in towards the fingertips. So again, bring yourself into a comfortable position. You could easily do this standing up. You don't have to stay seated. So first off, let's start with some tendon gliding in the hands. Obviously, if you're with a machine all day with one hand, you're using that quite a lot and squeezing. With the other hand, you're perhaps spreading if you're a tattoo artist. Similarly, if you are working on a desk all day, you're in these shortened ranges for your fingers, typing away, perhaps even writing. So it's always a good idea to just check in with the hands and look after them. I've spent my fair bit of time ruining and injuring them, so <laughs> I like to take care of them. So, tendon gliding, we're gonna start super simple. With both of your hands, I just want you to take the thumb to index finger and squeeze, to middle finger, to ring finger, to pinky. We're just gonna keep doing that a couple times. Think about really, really squeezing between the two fingers. Again, we're just trying to get those tendons moving nice and active. Beautiful. Okay, one more. Okay, and then from here, we're going to think about spreading the hands as much as possible. So squeeze them together and then spread the fingers. And again, squeeze and spread. Nice. Again, just a couple of these, fairly intuitive, see how it feels. You might be getting some feedback up into your forearm muscles, a lot of your sort of wrist extensors and flexors live there. Okay. Now from here, this is one of my favorite ones. Takes a little bit of coordination, but it's quite fun to do. You're going to think about curling your fingers slowly down into a fist. So start with the fingers straight 
and then think about the tips of the fingers curling down towards your knuckles and then into a whole fist and then thumb wraps around and we squeeze. We unpeel the same way, thumb, fingers to knuckles and extend. So again, it's this really controlled movement coming down into a fist, slowly peeling, slowly moving. And I don't know about you guys, but when I do this, I always get really odd crunching sensations in my hands. And it's honestly, from what my osteo has told me, it's nothing too, you know, worrying. It's literally that my tendons are quite dry. <laughs> now, dryness can come from lack of hydration or just from lack of kind of general movement like this. So we're just trying to help them out right now. Cool. And then release, shake them up. Last one I want to show is something called the duck. Super, super easy from here, extending and then squeezing all fingers together. Extend, squeeze. So a little bit of hand rehab. It's a really, really easy movement snack to add into your day to day. You know, when you're taking a break from work, you're making a cup of tea, you're grabbing a snack. Just do a couple of these. <laughs> all right, shake it out. Forearm health, because forearms are super important when it comes to looking after wrists as well. Starting with your right thumb towards the top of your left forearm, you're just going to push down. I'm not going to push too hard because that's a new tattoo. <laughs> Very apt for this video. <laughs> and I'm just going to start to press and work down the forearm muscles. So you want to think about really, really squeezing a bit of blood flow down the forearm into the wrist. Wrists are notoriously bad for having good blood flow. Just do that a couple of times, kind of squeeze down it as well. All right, same thing, other side, again, fresh tattoo, so I'm just gonna try to avoid. <laughs> Beautiful. But yeah, it's a really, really lovely way to just bring in a fresh supply of blood and just give the muscles a little bit of external feedback. Okay, shake it out. All right, let's have a look at some nerve flossing. So you've got three nerves that live in the back of your neck, so in your C-spine, and they travel down the shoulder all the way down into the fingertips on both arms, kind of interwoven around the bicep forearms and fingers. So we're gonna have a look at them and just see if we can floss them. <laughs> so if you extend your right arm out towards the side and stick the fingers up towards the ceiling, then from here, fingertips come to the ground and you're gonna take your head towards that hand. So head now moves to the right. Now, as the fingertips come up, you move your head to the left. Now you're just gonna repeat that. Now, what's quite interesting about working with the nerves is that they feel very, very different to like stretching a muscle or rotating a joint. Sometimes it can feel like pins and needles. Sometimes it can feel like a buzz or a tingling sensation. Sometimes it feels like nothing. Sometimes it feels like itchy or a bit, you know, warm or hot. But yeah, just quite fascinating. And it will radiate up and down from where the neck is down into the fingertips. Okay. And then release, shake it up. Take it to the other side, left arm extends, fingertips up, then fingertips down, turn the head the same way. And again, what's interesting about this is that right and left will be entirely different for how you kind of experience it. So right now, for example, I'm feeling this quite a lot in my elbow but on the right hand side, I felt a lot in my bicep and my fingers. <laughs> All right, and then relax, shake it out to kind of just help decompress the nerves where they start. You're gonna interlace the hands behind your head, slowly draw your chin down to your chest. And just think about creating space in between the vertebrae and the top of your neck. So the base of the skull. Lovely. And then slowly release and have a little shake out. Okay, perfect. So what I want to do now is to come into some kind of like general mobility and couple that with some stretching, just so we got a little bit of two waves of thought. So active work and then more passive work. So if we start into a tabletop position, we're going to come into a thread the needle for the mobility or the active part. So keeping the right hand to the floor, Take the left hand behind your head and you're going to rotate your chest towards the left hand side. As you come to face the floor, thread all the left hand underneath the right, come down to the shoulder. Oh, did you hear that click? Bloody hell. 
That was nice. <laughs> and then you just rotate again and thread all through. So I tend not to prescribe like a time restriction or a rep range for movements like this. I like you to have a level of autonomy and build your own intuition around it. So if that means you're constantly moving and flowing in between the two postures, absolutely go for that. If it means that there's moments where you pause, absolutely go for that. If you want to do it longer, pause the video, keep it going. <laughs> All right, let's go one more. Then bring it back to the middle, let's swap sides over. So right hand behind the head, rotate. And then again, thread all down and through. Rotating. And thread all down and through. <laughs> I saw my osteopath yesterday. I think that's why I'm clicking loads today. Feels hella good though. Okay. <laughs> and let's go one more. Okay, nice. Bring it back to the center, have a little roll through the shoulders. So what I wanna couple that with is a passive pose. We're gonna come into a lateral puppy or a sideways puppy pose taken from yoga. So if you walk your hands round towards the left hand side, so kind of coming out to 45 degrees. If you've been to any of my classes, you know I always include this one because I love it. So we're gonna drop our left elbow left forearm down to the floor. And I want you to reach your right arm as far away from you as possible. And then let the forehead come down to rest on the floor. So stretching through the right hand side of the body. If you kind of want to intensify the stretch for that area, think about pushing the hand of the right down to the ground or equally trying to pull it back towards you. Kind of play around with those sensations, see what feels good. And we're gonna take perhaps two more breaths here, but again, if you wanna be here longer, go for that. Okay, slowly bring everything back into the middle, have a little roll through your shoulders. And we do the same thing on the other side. So walk your hands around to again, that 45 degree angle. Then we're gonna take the right elbow, right forearm to the ground, stretch our left hand away, forehead comes down to rest. Again, breathing and holding here. The more again you either push the left hand through the ground or try to actively pull it back, see if that increases that sensation. Okay, we're gonna go for two more breaths. And then slowly slide it all the way back to the middle, have a little roll through the shoulders. All right, so from here, back to your tall kneeling stance, we're gonna take it into some movements with the lower body. This is an adductor lunge. So from this tall kneeling stance, you're gonna step your right foot out towards the right hand side with the toes pointing away from you. And then from here, we're going to bend into that right leg, going as low as you fancy and bringing it back up. So again, slowly coming down and then back up. I have quite a lot of range in my ankles. My ankles are very, very flexible. So please don't worry if yours doesn't look like that. Again, it's never about that. It's about how it feels. If you find that you want to lift your heel off the ground, absolutely go for it. It's about kind of noticing how the hips and the surrounding muscles feel. What's quite nice to involve here is some movement for the rest of your spine. So maybe as you bend into the right leg, left arm reaches up. <laughs> and you get a lovely side stretch for the body. Like, shit, that feels so good. <laughs> but yeah, you kind of time it how you want. Hang out in the pose a little bit longer if you fancy. Okay. And then bring it all the way back to the middle. Let's swap it over. So taking left foot out towards the side, and then again, when you're ready, bending in and out. Test the waters first of all, see how the movement feels on this leg, how the ankle, the knee feels, and then you can start to bring 
that extra bit of movement in with the top arm extending and reaching. Feel free to hold it. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. From here, bring it back to the middle. We're gonna take it into a 90-90 leg position and hold. So if you come down to sit on your butt, you're gonna plant your heels down to the floor, hands behind and drop both knees down to the right hand side. So if this feels quite intense for the hips, you can bring the legs a little bit closer together. So you're more into a shin box position. So there's kind of like triangles as opposed to squares here. See what feels good. But basically I just want you to start to slowly load your body weight forwards into the front leg. Whether that's staying on the hands or coming down to forearms. It's very, very similar to pigeon pose in yoga. The way that we load into the front leg, but sometimes it just feels a little bit more intense. We're just gonna hold here and breathe. Just see how the angles, how the stretch progressively feels for the muscles and for your body. If you need to back out, of course, go for that. All right. And again, we're gonna go for two more breaths and we're gonna switch sides. Beautiful. And bring it all the way up. Hands behind, switch your knees through the middle, then over towards the other side. Again, take your time, slowly begin to load into the front leg, bringing the body down. So I want to look at one more sort of active slash mobility drill and one more passive stretch. And this one's focusing a little bit more on the spine. Okay, let's go for two more breaths here. And then slowly bring it all the way up and release the legs, give them a little shake. All right, we're gonna have a look at some spinal waves. We're gonna do them in a sort of tabletop position. We're gonna wave in between a child's pose and a cobra position. You can do this with your toes tucked or you can have them flat. It's honestly just personal preference at this point. But if you extend the arms forwards, let the head relax, send the butt towards your heels, you're gonna slowly roll forward. So lift the butt off the heels, bring the shoulders over the wrists. You can bend the arms a little bit as the hips come down and you scoop, you lift the chest. Nice, and I really want you to focus on this extension in the spine. Again, particularly because our spine likes to be in flexion. If we're sitting down, we're drawing, we're tattooing, we're working on our laptop. And then roll all the way back, push through the hands, arch the back, take it into your child's pose. And then again, take your time, roll it all the way forwards, maybe let the arms bend, scoop, lift the chest. Think about really breathing into your belly button, into your chest, drawing the shoulders back, maybe a little gentle rock side to side. Okay and then roll it back again. Just move at a speed that you are comfortable with. If you want to go a little bit quicker, you're more than welcome to. If you wanna hang out a little bit, that's cool. But like we started with those tabletops, it's also quite nice to play with sideways movement here. So say I'm in child's pose, I lift up, but I push my body to the right, and then I circle forwards. And then I push my body to the left and I move back. So kind of bring in a little bit more variety. Having movement variety is super important and key to just kind of getting everything mobilized and moved. In my opinion, there's no such thing as good or bad posture. It's about adding variety and variation to how you hold your body your spine, your hips, your shoulders. Okay. All right, so from here, let's come into our stretch. It's my favorite one for the chest. 
Bring yourself down to lie on your belly. Okay. And I called this one a scorpion switch. <laughs> We're going to extend our, let's do left arm first. Left arm out to the side. So the wrist, the elbow, shoulder, all in one nice long line. Have a look at your left shoulder. Instead of it rolling down, try to roll it back. So it's just that simple action of rolling it back. Right hand goes underneath right shoulder. Bend your right leg. And then you're going to roll over onto your left arm. Your head can either stay elevated or you can take it down to the floor. But there should be room for you to plant that right foot down. If not, sometimes it's quite nice to just have the feet one on top of the other, legs one on top of the other. Oh, <laughs> car alarm. <laughs> Um, and you keep balance because the right hand is here holding you in place. Now, if this feels like there's not much feedback, what you can start to do is just come out a bit. And instead of having your left arm to 90 degrees, you bring it more to 45 degrees and then just go again. But I warn you, that's very intense. <laughs> well, it is for me, at least. You might be breezing through it. OK, let's go two more breaths here. Okay, slowly take it back to the middle. Just bring both your hands as a little pillow and rock your head side to side. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So right arm extends away. Remember, try roll the shoulder back. Left hand underneath left shoulder. Bend the left leg. Again, roll onto the right. Your head can come down. Left foot can stay where it is or you can match it. Or again, if you want to, if you feel like you want to change angle off your right arm, come out of it, then reset and go again. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go one more breath. And slowly bring it back to the middle and bring yourself all the way up to seated. <sighs> okay. Final little thing I want to show you is to do with breath, using the breath to kind of expand into a certain area. So if you're sitting, if you're standing, interlace the hands, push them forwards, and then really think about pushing them away and draw the rib cage to your hips. So chin is in. So we're trying to stretch out the upper back. Now the breath that I want you to go with is inhale through the nose, a real gentle exhale out of the mouth. And again, you keep it going. So you think about creating space in between the vertebrae, in between the shoulder blades. Let's go two more. Relax the head if you want. And last one. And then slowly release and come all the way up. Hmm. So I hope you guys enjoyed and feel nice and mobilized. <laughs> Do let me know in the comments what you liked about the video, what you would like more of from me on my channel, and I'll happily help you out. If not, I will see you next time. Bye.